Hello, and welcome to the third of four training modules on the principles of earth grounding resistance. My name is Luis Silva, and I will be your host. As previously discussed, soil resistivity tests are taken to determine the location, type, and size of earth grounding system. In most areas, the ground has low enough resistivity values, measured at gnome centimeters, that one type of standard grounding system, such as a ground rod, ring, or plate, can be used. However, some buildings, towers, and structures are built on poor conductive soil, such as bare stone or rocky areas. In such areas, grounding electrodes can be encased in a low-resistance, non-corrosive concrete to reduce the resistance between the grounding system and the earth, as shown on the screen. Less than optimal soil conditions may require more complex grounding systems or artificial soils to reduce resistance to ground to required levels. The grounding system resistance to ground for a rod, pipe, or plate electrode must be 25 ohms or less. Per the NEC, if one rod, pipe, or plate electrode exceeds the 25 ohm limit of resistance to ground, additional electrodes can be added to the system to lower the total resistance. Afterward, the resistance to ground must be measured. Resistance is lowered by approximate percentages as each additional rod with the same individual resistance is added. The second rod lowers the total resistance to approximately 60% of the first rod. The third rod lowers the total resistance to approximately 40% of the first rod. The fourth rod lowers the total resistance to approximately 33% of the first rod. Multiple electrodes must be at least 6 feet apart, or 2 meters, and connected together at the top, as shown here. The earth grounding is established through a grounding electrode, such as a rod or steel building frame that has been effectively grounded. The neutral to ground connection must be made at the transformer or the main service panel only. The neutral to ground connection is made by connecting the neutral bus to the ground bus with a main bonding jumper and the grounding electrode system by a grounding electrode conductor. A main bonding jumper is a connection in the service panel that connects the equipment grounding conductor, the grounding electrode conductor, and the grounded conductor, as shown on the screen. A ground loop is an electrical circuit that has more than one grounding point connected to earth ground, with a voltage potential difference between the grounding points high enough to produce a circulating current in the grounding system. The two grounding electrodes result in current circulating and forming a ground loop between the two grounding electrodes in an attempt to equalize the difference in voltage potential. Current circulation is caused by current that flows from a higher voltage potential to a lower voltage potential. A voltage potential exists because there's a difference in impedance, total resistance, inductance, and capacitance between the two ground points. The amount of current flow can be small in microamps or milliamps, or large up to several amps. If current is high enough, the fuse opens or the circuit breaker trips. It is a smaller amount of leakage current that causes problems such as electrical shock because it can go undetected until it increases to the point of tripping the circuit breaker. Since the points at which the utility is grounded and the service is grounded with a low resistance conductor, the conductor carries most of the system neutral current back to the transformer. The amount of current flow through the ground electrode back to the transformer is typically in the range of 5 to 100 milliamps. Any current over 5 milliamps should indicate the source of leakage current. A grounding system should be tested inside the power panel. This is to inspect the system wiring and branch current on each hot, neutral, and ground to understand system operation. High current can cause problems, and high ground leakage current is typically caused by poor, loose, or damaged neutral connections that increase the total resistance of the neutral conductor. Thank you for listening. We encourage you to continue on to Module 4, The Principles of Earth Grounding Resistance.